Today, people can find out what's going on by simply turning on the television, making a call, or surfing the internet. Over a century ago, information was primarily presented through newspapers. Though not as immediate as television, cellular telephone, or computer, newspapers and printing were an integral part of any new and growing community. The State Capitol Publishing Company Museum, on this edition of Historical Treasures, Stories of Our Past. The boom of cannons signaled the first opening of the Oklahoma territories for settlement. Oklahoma was such an exotic sounding place. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's quite something different than a lot of how the states are named. Oklahoma was very exotic in the 1890s. The opening of the unassigned lands, um, there was a lot of hype uh, surrounding that. Um, President Harrison signed the, the proclamation to open the land. Um, and it, it was one of the few places left. Uh, the land was free. When people heard about the Oklahoma land run, it was a, a mob mentality or a gold rush mentality. There were a lot of flyers and broadsides being published, a lot of newspaper stories, especially in Kansas, really promoting the unassigned lands, which was to become Oklahoma Territory. The idea that, that you could come to a new place and start from scratch and, and build something and be a part of it. Um, you know, as Oklahoma was the 46th state, you know, there were very few places left uh, to do that by the 1890s. Uh, the African Americans, especially in the Northeast and Southeast, saw this as an opportunity for them to come west and to leave all the racial, racial baggage behind them and uh, come out here and have a new start in the west. And of course, that was not true, though that racist baggage came, uh, came here out to the west also. However, that's a good example of how people thought you could come out here to Oklahoma and have a new start. Once the land was settled, there would be a need for both sending and receiving news people would want to be informed. Of course, printing had been around for, uh, you know, for several hundred years, um, but that was certainly the way to reach uh, the people, you know, obviously prior to television and CNN and, and those sorts of things. Um, so, you know, the written word or written media uh, was the way to uh, get your name, get your business, or um, get information across. Frank Hilton Greer took part in the April 22, 1889 land run, and he was ready to take advantage of the need for publishing in the new territory. Frank Greer was from Winfield, Kansas, and in Winfield, Kansas, his brother was a printer, and his brother had a printing and publishing company in Winfield. Um, Frank Greer was a young man when he came into Oklahoma, and uh, he was just kind of starting out. He was a very good businessman, very intelligent. When he heard about the land offerings down here, um, of course, he decided that free land sounded like a great opportunity, but he also wanted to start a business venture. He also had to be a pretty aggressive type person to be a Sooner, which he got here uh, before everybody did on the land run, so he really took a chance on getting caught. But he did that because he wanted that competitive edge for his newspaper. Greer was a very opportunistic uh, individual, uh, saw a great opportunity in the opening of uh, Oklahoma Territory and Guthrie, which um, in some respects was victim of a mob mentality. Guthrie was the buzzword, it's where people wanted to be. Greer began his news empire before setting foot on the new land. Working from his brother's printing office in Winfield, Kansas, Greer published three issues of the Oklahoma State Capitol. This was Greer's entry into Oklahoma publishing. He was a very savvy businessman. He had a lot of very good business sense. And I think that he just knew that this, there was going to be a lot of action going on here, and he really didn't want to miss out on that. Right before he came here to open up his newspaper, he worked with his brother in Winfield, Kansas. He had $39 to his name in, in uh, 1889, uh, left $10 of that with his wife and, and came to Guthrie with the rest. Also, you have to remember that most people knew that, uh, that there were two land off offices in the unassigned lands, one in Kingfisher and Guthrie. Most people had a pretty good idea that Guthrie would soon be the territorial capital just because of its good location. Guthrie did have its own train stop. Um, for whatever reason, the train did not stop in Guthrie that day. He and a, a friend bribed a brakeman 
to uh, slow the train down enough so they could jump off without getting hurt. Um, and when the land run started at around noon of April 22nd, he ran up from a hiding place and started selling his newspaper. Greer was pretty sharp. He knew that not only were farmers going to come out here to be in the land run, but there were also going to be a lot of urbanites. There were going to be bankers and doctors and lawyers and sign painters. Those kind of businesses here in Guthrie and Oklahoma City, they were going to need a newspaper. So I think he came here to make his fortune and to build an empire. Setting up a tent on the corner of Broad and Cleveland Avenue in Guthrie, Greer established the Oklahoma State Capitol, the first newspaper in Oklahoma. Guthrie had several small newspapers that first year. Um, many of them were absorbed um, later on. Of course, he came here first to establish a newspaper, and the printing and publishing uh, weren't exactly sidelines, but th that's what paid for him to stay in the newspaper business because just the newspaper business alone would, was a pretty cutthroat business. Initial worries over continued success soon evaporated as Greer in his own words states. There was a tremendous demand for job printing. Letterheads were turned out at $15 per thousand and business cards at $10 per thousand. So rushing was the business and as fast as money was taken in, new material had to be added to the plant. And of course business was booming in Guthrie. So there were a lot of people needing printing jobs done. And so right from the beginning, Frank was inundated with small printing jobs um, that even with his um, little bit of equipment that he had, he was able to, to complete quite efficiently. He was a very successful uh, businessman um, and actually rapidly gained, uh, gained customers um, and, and made, made quite a lot of money in the, in the first several months. Within two months, Greer moved the printing operation to a frame building. As the paper grew in circulation, so did Greer's political power since he was publishing a newspaper in the territorial capital. Greer started the newspaper and then saw that there needed to be a Republican voice in the Oklahoma Territory to counter the Democratic voice in Oklahoma City. Like many newspaper editors of the day, he used his newspaper as a platform for his political um, goals and uh, the goals of his political allies. The newspaper was um, at, at the time had the largest circulation or he claimed the largest circulation in, in the territory. Um, eventually Greer was uh, sending the newspaper all across Oklahoma Territory as well as Indian Territory. In 1892 Greer was elected to the Oklahoma Territorial House of Representatives. It, the paper was also very important to his political power. Uh, Frank Greer was a Republican, uh, and the state capital newspaper uh, was a Republican newspaper. Um, so he was able to use his newspaper and his editorials um, to further the cause of the Republican Party. Um, gained a lot of favor for him from um, the politicians, especially in, in territorial days. Also through the newspaper, he was able to gain a lot of recognition, and eventually in 1892, he was elected to the Oklahoma Territorial House of Representatives. Right after Greer was elected to the territorial legislature, he designed the territorial seal. Under territorial governor W.C. Renfro, uh, Frank Greer was named the official printer of Oklahoma Territory and the newspaper, the state capitol, was named the official newspaper of the territory as well. It was certainly a badge of honor to, uh, to be awarded that contract um, and also brought a lot of money for him. Uh, that's, a, you know, if you think of any document that, uh, that would be used in a government transaction from a deed uh, to a marriage certificate, um, Greer would have made it. So those were very important accolades and that probably represented the peak of Frank Greer's political power. The end of Greer's success would be marked by tragedy. Continued to do very well here until 1902 and that is when uh, the building caught fire and burned down. That was fairly common for printing and publishing companies in those days. It had to do with the heat um, being put off by the machines, especially if you're in a wood frame building. However, uh, they never really found the source of the fire. It could have been a number of things. The citizens of Guthrie approached him and said, we don't want you to leave. And uh, they put together a subscription of $50,000 for him, uh, which they were going to give to him. However, Greer uh, elected to pay it back with interest. And he built what built.